All right, guys. So, hello. Um, Alex here, and I am going to make a video on the um, different willow species that I'm going to be offering for people. I might as well go through the different things you could be doing with them and just some of the terms and ins and outs of this before I go into the actual species. So, for a number of different projects um, in the educational sphere, using plants for things is helpful. So, we have a living fence made out of willow trees at the school that I volunteer with. And we basically made it out of rooted cuttings of gray willow that we had planted about four or five feet apart from each other. Um, it's only like seven willows long. It's not a humongous thing, but in theory you could make a very lengthy willow fence. Um, if you're making biodiversity gardens or trying to uh, encourage native species to visit your area, um, your school or campground or whatever, planting willow cuttings is a good idea. You can also have the plants as a demonstration of a plant propagation technique or for um, different biodiversity lessons. You could have the um, plants as part of a pollinator effort. So there are a number of different purposes of willows and their cuttings that I'll be taking in, I don't know, about six weeks, maybe slightly fewer weeks that will be helpful. And so if educators are interested in any willow cuttings, please send me an email, freeeducatorresources at gmail.com, and I will send you cuttings for free. Um, if you're in the New England area, like um, Rhode Island or Connecticut, or even parts of Massachusetts, um, we could probably arrange a pickup, drop off, something like that. Um, of course, it would be completely... Uh, contact free or social distanced or whatever you're most comfortable with given we're living in the middle of a pandemic and um, that would be um, another way to get the cuttings to you so a couple of things here I will be shipping only throughout the US for a few reasons biggest reason is that a lot of plant materials especially things like willows where there can be um, internal parasites and pathogens can't be shipped outside of our borders, and also the cost of shipping um, parcels internationally is exceedingly high. I want to do this for free for everybody, and I'm willing to do this for people without getting anything in return, but that does come with the stipulation that there are limits to how much I can do. Because I am a graduate student, I only make a certain amount of money, and so it's um, difficult. And I know that educators have a hard time affording what they need for their lessons and their classes and things like that because I've been there, I understand that, and so I want to take that burden off of you. But that does come with the stipulation that currently I'm not funded to be doing this project by anybody. Um, it's self-funded. A um, couple of other things. I will be taking the willow cuttings basically late February through early March. Um, right now it's just a little bit too early to take the cuttings. They won't root very well at this time of year. You want the winter cold to be um, a little bit more prolonged before you take the cuttings. Um, it has to do with the buildup of hormones and things like that that occur as the winter progresses. Once we get to a certain point in the winter time, it's going to be a lot easier for us to take the cuttings successfully. But um, there will come a time when I'm able to take the cuttings and then I can distribute them to people who are interested. Um, few other things, and um, some of these are going to be species specific, but I can't necessarily guarantee the sex of the willow. Now, remember that willows are dioecious, you have separate male and female plants, and for pollinator use, you may go with males, whereas for other uses, you may be fine with male or female plants. Um, or if you're looking for a specific sex, maybe for hybridization projects, things like that. Um, what I'm going to do 
for a lot of these willows because we need males for one purpose here for my research and for a project I'm working on and then we need females for a different research project uh, well it's more like we're going to take cuttings and the ones that happen to be females that we're not going to use for project A is going to go to project B um, I'm going to take cuttings in clumps um, and going to label from each species, you know, A through Z or whatever. And then I'm going to take floral buds from that same tree and have a corresponding label. And those floral buds will be forced out so I can sex the plant so that I'll know. Um, what this means is if I send you cuttings, often what you'll see is um, there'll be a cutting bundle and it may have a number or a letter attached to it. And later on, once I've sexed that particular plant, I will let you know what um, sex each one that I sent you is. Um, keep in mind, um, if I number th or if I letter things A through Z or something, I may not necessarily send a, per a given person A, B, and C. I may send somebody like A, R, Q, something like that, and that corresponds to my labeling system. If you're not concerned about whether or not your plant is a male or female, then you don't need to worry too much about it. I will still let you know what sex is everything was, um, even if you don't find it helpful. But just keep that in mind. And so let's go into the species. All right, so willows. First we have the gray willow, Salus cinerea. Um, so this is a non-native invasive willow, so I don't necessarily recommend people grow it extensively. I will only be offering males of this species, and it's mostly for pollinator purposes. Now, this is an early flowering willow for people who are looking to do um, pollination and um, pollinator food and have an early season pollen resource. That is my intention. You can also use the unexpanded catkins as uh, ornaments. It might be a good lesson in, um, you know, I have done a lot of agriculture and farming lessons with students, and one of the things that we have to teach them, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> is that a lot of plant species um, can be grown for their ornamental value, and you can make a living growing things that people aren't going to be growing for food, but rather to have something cool to look at. Um, this is Salus Babylonica, the weeping willow. Now, a couple of things about weeping willow. Um, I think weeping willow is technically a hybrid willow and not pure Babylonica. Um, I think it's actually like Salus pendulina, which is a hybrid name. It's a, um, really nice ornamental plant, and it grows into a big tree. And if anybody's interested in this, let me know. I can start some cuttings of this. This species is oftentimes androgynous, where you get both male and female catkins on the same plant. But I'll still force out floral buds and see what I get. Then we have curly willow, which I think is also another Babylonica hybrid. It's also non-native. Um, it has ornamental value. I have a green stemmed and a yellow stemmed variety available to me. They're both males, so I know that those guys are males. For anybody interested in male curly willow. Then we get to our native Salus discolor. This is a good ornamental plant. It's native. It's good for promoting local biodiversity. Um, it's our native pussy willow. You can use it as a cut ornamental. You can use it for pollinators. It's an early season flowering plant. Um, good alternative to Cenaria. I don't know the sex on these. I have a huge stand at my disposal that I will be taking cuttings from, so let me know if you're interested. Then we have Silky Willow, Salus cerisia. These I find growing in the same spot as the discolor. Again, can't guarantee sex. It flowers a little bit later in the season. Good for um, a little bit later spring bee forage, as well as just general biodiversity. This is a wetland obligate plant, so it likes wet feet. Make sure that it gets plenty of water if you happen to grow it and plant it. 
Salus melanostachys, the black pussy willow. This is another non-native. It has these attractive um, black flowers that are precocious, and it's good for ornamental value. If anybody's interested, I don't know if the specimen I'm taking cuttings from is male or female, but I will know soon. Ah, then we have black willow, Salus nigra. This is a nice, hardy, native tree. It gets humongous. It's good for, you know, biodiversity and other demonstrations. It's wetland obligate as well as the sericea, so you want to make sure that it gets plenty of water. Um, I have a lot of this at my disposal. I have a few specimens that I know to be male, if anybody really is dead set on getting males. Otherwise, it's going to be a mixed bag. Salus occidentalis, or dwarf prairie willow. This is another native willow. It's a fairly early bloomer. It makes a cute little prostrate shrub. Its growth habit is perfect for small spaces. Good um, demonstration of various plant technique and other concepts. Warning here, the population I sample from is very female heavy. Can't necessarily guarantee I'll have males, but I will try. This is Salus sericima, the autumn willow. It flowers later in the spring, and its seeds are released in the fall. Um, I found a stand of it. Can't guarantee sex, but it might be a good um, plant if you're really going for biodiversity. Salus lucida. This is the um, shining willow. I don't have a lot of this at my disposal, so I will limit the amount that I send off to people if they're interested, but it blooms a little bit later in the season, good for later season bee forage as well as some biodiversity display, and um, it's a cool plant. Uh, 